Evil geniuses. Uh, for those of you who are watching the Beyond the Summit 2 stream, uh, unfortunately the PC that was streaming the game did crash, uh, but we should have OG versus IG Vitality back for you guys in just a few moments. In the meantime, for those just joining us for this series, EG currently trailing 0 to 1. It was a pretty close game uh, to open things up through the mid game, but series of very unfortunate deaths for Sumail without buyback resulted in EG getting run over, losing their entire base. I'm LD. Joined here by Guts for game number two. Game two, time for EG to step up. And it's a secret who first saw their new roster didn't quite live up to expectations. Now EG, you know, let's see if they can perhaps surprise some people. But so far, it's been, it's been like the most stable teams. I mean, let's say stable. Newbie's got a new roster. Vici Gaming's brought in Ghost. Um, but their teams have been actually playing official matches. They've been playing qualifiers. They've had a bit more actual practice leading up outside of scrims. And uh, so far, that's paid off for them. So, as far as adjustments go this game, the Kunkaban. This is a hero that oh, yeah. rose to prominence during TI, has been getting picked a lot since then. In respect ban here, Ten so... What are we expecting in this game, gods? Last game was a first overall pick, Keeper of the Light. I'm expecting something completely different. Like, I mean, Sanking for starters, that's something completely different, but I think if you're EG, you have you've obviously only been playing scrims and scrims you're really like scrims is a new team it's not just you've been playing scrims it's that you've got a completely new roster you probably tried all different play styles you probably tried like more push heavy you've tried like ones where your that game was like more split push playing around this male tinker um they i'm sure they've got like five to ten different styles and drafts that they want to just try out and this is just let's go to plan b that's that's all this game is to me sand king first overall yeah we'll be Generally, when we've seen the SK, it has been in the offlane with help. I think that's probably the most common way the heroes run. Situationally, we'll see them in like that 1v1 mid if it's a really easy melee matchup. But because they banned Kunkka gods, that means that the Yang Batriders right through. And the Oracle's already been taken by VG, so probably the most popular way to counter the lasso nowadays uh, is already on VG's in their capable hands, I should say. Yeah, ban at game one, you decide something else more ban worthy game two, and then they'll sure as hell take it. So Oracle's been one of the standout heroes throughout today. You go back to the, the B series and constantly the false promises to get clutch saves off. It was the fortunes and to purge stuff. I mean, all their spells just so ridiculously good in different situations. So um, definitely a hero that may even start getting some first stage bans, but so it's so open as far as what you can play and what you can do that it's hard to say, oh, you got a first ban this year and then something else will slip through. That's how the bat gets through this game. So what do you pick to do with it? They go for the right. Omni Knight Omni, space sure. here. <laughs> I don't think he's really the uh, bat counter per se. Um, yeah. But is this like a? Do you think this is an Omni Knight with a particular like purpose already, or is it more they just like Omni Knight and they are gonna build around him moving forward? I think there's a purpose. I don't know what the purpose is, LD. There should be a purpose. <laughs> oh, no, I, I know there will be a purpose. <laughs> yeah, at yeah, least yeah. there's some. I, I mean, like San Keen Omni <laughs> versus Oracle. Oh, no, no. Doesn't, doesn't I feel like San Keen Omni? No, no. Great this this is more me saying as someone who I mean, we're watching EG play their first games. I have no idea what they do. Pick this, but there's. I don't know what the purpose is, but we'll find out probably as the next couple of picks come out. It's not really picked immediately to counter the bat or the oracle particularly. Um, it's perhaps, it's just again to enable Sumail or Ateezy's hero, whatever we're going to be seeing them on. It's something that can perhaps synergize and combo well with Omni Knight. So the lion will be removed here, and we'll have to see what the intent of that ban is. Obviously I... great against illusion-based heroes. Uh, perhaps they want to run someone a little more mobile, like a Storm Spirit, for mm -hmm. a chance. We'll yeah. wait and see what the plan is. I'm not seemingly the strongest support now, but they probably look at the pool and they're like, there's not many safe lane supports left. Let's, let's perhaps target some bans on some that can cause problems, at least. Someone who is available, by the way, is Drow. First phase ban oh, wow, in the previous yeah. series, uh, or snagged right up if she wasn't. Uh, but this time around, instead, EG removed the Huskar. Uh, the Drow remains available. Hmm. What do they want to go? Timbersaw ban now. And this feels like a Terrorblade pick right now with the TB Lion bans, but... Avicii, yeah. Could, yeah. And that's where the Lion, yeah, the, the Lion as well as the, the here. Yeah. 
for sure. T T TB works very well. Something EG can easily ban out, but just, I mean, Sanking's a decent matchup. TB, not a hero that likes to build BKB. Laning stage, you can put a lot of pressure on him with a dual lane, and that's perhaps what they're thinking with Sanking Omni Knight. But if you're picking Omni Knight just to have this strong lane with Sanking, Dazzle's perhaps the stronger option. That's what Navi were doing with his Sanking Dazzle dual lane in the off lane. Mm. So I think it's more, I mean, you could dual lane it and then you've also got the strong mid game with Repel. So that's where it's a slightly weaker lane, but you've got a better mid game than the Dazzle. Yeah, I was I was also thinking maybe Vici's trying to like trick EG into thinking they still want the Terra Blade and then they're just going to snap pick a Drow instead. But <laughs> EG will just go ahead and ban out the Drow. So there yeah. will be something fresh here for Vici. Um, there's some other carries this team likes to run. And he's very well known for his Juggernaut, uh, his Sven. Oh, we've seen a little Morphling, super common. I, I'm mm -hmm. not as familiar with Ghost or, or what he likes to play mid. You know, does anything in particular jump out? Have you had a chance to watch him much yet? No, not at all. Let me I... let me see. Did Kano guy do some good research? Um, well, his nickname is Ugly Ghost. He's 8.7 KMMR. Oh, okay, there is the end. I'm uh, sure he like, plays Sanky Invoker Mami. and stuff, you know, like every high MMR player is like, I think it was 8.7k MMR when I saw his, like, hovered yeah. over his profile, so, um, yeah, I'm sure the guy's more than capable of playing a lot of, a lot of different mid heroes to get up there. I like the Jug here, great against that bro and the Repel combo, can also deal with the Caustic pretty well, uh, helps to sustain your push, can work on Roshan relatively early. And it's not a hero that needs a whole lot of help, so it frees up the supports to stack for the Batrider. I believe the overall game plan pretty flexible here. Yeah, like, you're looking at Ghosts, his most like heroes on is Queen of Pain, Invoker, Storm. Pain. Yeah, that's actually most played hero of all time in pubs. I, I met most of that in the, the more distant past. <laughs> Yeah, Jug is one of his high. He actually played a lot of Jug mid. It's one of his yeah. highest win rates. I mean, again, this is pub games that we're looking at, but. I guess it depends. On... Ooh, I would like a troll <laughs> Jug. <laughs> Not sure about this game, but. <laughs> Based on some of his heroes, I, it looks, sounds like he uh, used a lot of the flavor of the month heroes at the time. The troll's there, the earth spirit is there. So. EG. Uh... I will grab the Beastmaster. Dang. Is it oh. a, I mean, not, now you gotta ask, like, what are Ichi's lanes? What's, I was thinking, yeah, Sankin Omni Knight dual lane off lane, and it's, oh, does Beastmaster <laughs> jungle and they still do that? Do they put one of these heroes mid, uh, and then the other one in the off lane between the Beastmaster and the Sankin? Like, yeah. Who, who's playing say, what? Who's going where? I want to say one needs to be mid, because if you want to jungle the Beastmaster with Omni support, you have really weak lanes. You've got a lot of melee heroes. That to me is a problem. I think more likely we see something like Sankin mid, Beastmaster, jungle slash off lane. Lane, you know, but I don't like the idea of having Beastmaster jungling while Omni Knight plays the five position support. It just that seems too weak. super greedy. <laughs> yeah, but you never know. Um, so Rubik, how good of a Rubik game? Obviously, this is uh, FY on the Rubik. Every, every game is a Rubik game when you're FY, I guess. <laughs> and San right. Sanking Sun is really good. Omni Knight has a lot of the purifications. Great, I mean, all of Omni Knight spells are happy to steal. I don't even know which one you want the most. Perhaps. The Repel, I mean, Guardian Angel sounds great, but in a lot of situations, Repel and Heal can be better, so all this spell's amazing. Well, I do like He's... this Razor pick. That's uh, That hero's super annoying for Batrider. Uh, mm -hmm. Jug struggles against him quite a bit. I'm and he's still... independent. He doesn't need help. Still wondering what they're doing with the lanes. It perhaps could be a safe lane solo hero like we saw last game. They give Arteezy a 1v1 matchup. Um, and that just means their two supports can help out the other lane, stack, jungle, farm, be just a bit more independent. Oh, we'll have to see who's playing what. I mean, Arteezy is known for his Razor, but Matt has been playing mid. Don't really know uh, that he would run like a plane Razor per se, so... It's just, it's hard to predict EG's lanes. VG seem a lot more straightforward though, gods. Like, Batrider off lane. Jug maybe mid, maybe safe lane, and then the support just roaming between the two. Yeah, I'm, I'm still confused what EG are doing. Like, I don't even, <laughs> I can't even theory craft their like, lanes right uh, now. We're just, gonna, we're just gonna ban someone that doesn't need help and can yeah. cure the laning stage, because your lineup already looks uh, uh, quite a bit greedy. Yeah, think of Ubichi, just focus on what you need to complete your draft. Maybe, like you say, ban an annoying hero that could perhaps screw up your plan, but don't worry too much about what weird stuff EG is doing right now with their lanes and heroes. 
So it is a 1-0 advantage, guys, for Vici Gaming. Uh, this is the former Vici Gaming Reborn. Uh, they have been promoted to Vici Gaming Original Gaming Classic after yep. their performance uh, over the past six months or so. Wouldn't you want to be Vici Gaming, the Jeremy Lin team, Vici Gaming J? Like that, that's like the cool team to be on, right? Is it? That's the one, he, Jeremy Lin endorsed one of the Vici Gaming teams. I don't know, like... What, what does that mean? Did he actually invest in the team? Or like he gave them all high fives? Like he sent some signed photos of himself? I think it's all a publicity thing where it's like, like you, I think it's the latter. He gave them all high fives. And then <laughs> now they can use his name to be like, this is the Jeremy Lin esports team. But I don't think, I mean, I don't know. This is just speculation, but I don't think he's actually that involved with the team. <laughs> Unlike some of the, like, these, like some of the players in the America who actually like invested and have their own organizations. This is a bit different. Well, EG. Not thinking about Jeremy Lin right now. They're thinking about how to force a game three. Ban out the Naga. And they will proceed into their final pick. Three melee heroes already. They're very level dependent. They don't really need that much farm gods, but they need a lot of levels already, this yeah. lineup. And it's a plant. Slark, so it's a support. It is a jungle beatmaster support. Uh, I'll just probably. Most likely, that sounds that sounds manageable. You could do the Sank support. That's also feasible, but the nice thing is the safe thing, but a Razor who's a range so having a Sank there roaming around could be kind of annoying to deal with, but not entirely sure what, what they're doing. This is very... This is... The slap, I mean, at least you've got a to set up for the heal bomb, so that's not uh, the weakest of us. And it could be against a Batrider if it's an offlane bat, which is normally what you would assume with VG having Yang as, as an immaculate bat. But you think there's like a chance they just run a mid bat for Ghost, uh, put something else offlane, maybe a Void? Very possible. I, they don't want to do the mid jug anymore with the Razor picked up, so... Uh. It seems to me like they want that like Slark first bat matchup, and I feel like VG have to recognize that. It's, yeah, it's not like a sad. big special tactic or anything. I think bat matches up pretty poorly against Razor as well, so they may be more inclined to pick like a standard mid hero that can sit back last hit. Fuck. The Quop maybe, you know? <laughs> His most played hero. Uh, uh, oh, they... okay, so it is the mid jug for Ghost. Um, yeah, mid jug and safe lane anti mate. So he's just going to Blade Fury down creep waves and try shrug off the, the damage seal, I guess. And he will be laning against uh, a Sumail Razor. So not the most fun matchup generally for Jug. Yeah, it's tough. But once you, you get a few levels, you can Blade Fury to fab, but even when you're Blade Furying, Sumail can still time the denies, so. You like this anti mage pick? Yeah, it's a good anti-mage game. Uh, there's no... Slack doesn't match up great against the hero. The one hero they had that's quite good is the Beastmaster against anti-mage with the raw plus Necro books to lock him down. You have got to follow up some of the sanking, but physical damage-wise, EG pick up quite a bit of items on Slack and or Razor to actually deal with an anti-mage, and their catch is limited mostly to the Beastmaster, so it's pretty good for him to be split pushing around and being annoying. Guys, uh, of course, a uh, reminder here for those who want to check out the other match, OG versus IG Vitality, currently underway on Beyond the Summit 2. New OG roster in their sea legs under them here in MDL action. EG looking to get theirs under them. Why? Well, scout out Zai again with the smoke. They're scouting out these EG wards. This is going to be two games in a row to get the D-Ward gods. Yeah, they're gonna. I mean, that's a big takeaway for EG. You go back and watch these replays, and you realize they probably didn't even see the game one play. You don't have much time between games, and to see the smoke TV scouts out their ward placement. Oh, I, I think he saw it. The, the sentries are, are on F. They don't yeah. have sentries. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think he's he's waiting to see if anyone else is in the bro. They've been thinking yeah, there the we go. ward. Gives it to his man. Like fighting ghosts for the wars. <laughs> pump fake, yeah. pump fake. That's like a that's a bounty room basically for for your mid player to get that ward money. So gets past the bottle, you know. So definitely worth giving it to ghost. Yeah, and in a disadvantage matchup, it's one where you give him that, you give him bounty rune, maybe you even deny the razor and yeah. be in great shape. Maybe even rushes boots just so you get out of the static link, but 
I'm liking, liking the staff of EG Gaming once again, and they should have pretty stable lane. So it will be a support stand. We're kind of questioning who, what, what, where is, is what, what are these drafts going to be? Crit is on the support Omni Knight, which means Universe playing the off lane slash Iron Talon jungling beast, a core beast mask. What do you think about the port Sand King nowadays? We used to see that very passive, you know, stack the jungle, get your level three, just level up sand and clear the jungle at that point. He has to win lace here. Are, are you expecting that just very passive style of Sand King? Is there a better way to play him, uh, given the, the hero uh... matchup, given the state of the game nowadays? I think he wants to impose himself on his lanes. The problem is mid jug is not a hero you can gank because of Blade Fury, top lanes and anti mage. The only real gankable lane is this bottom lane where the Batrider is. So he's very limited as far as lanes he can actually threaten. And right now he's just going to hover around this bottom lane. But more likely he's just going to have to stack pull and play the, the farm game because there's no lane where he can actually really pose a big threat. Do you see anti mage getting complete free farm uh, of course the trade is very fast jungle performance from universe undoubtedly crit yeah. looking to deal with that fly who wanted to be a nuisance in the woods that will be prevented iron talent already picked up so free farm am afk jungle beastmaster zai trying to do the winning thing bottom uh, razor with a pretty good matchup against the jug both teams trying to give a bit of help to that mid lane early do you prefer either team's lane that's um, slightly for Vici, as far as what Vici Gaming are getting out of the lane, because it's a free farming anti mage, it's an empty lane. Um, but I guess Beastmaster with the jungle is a similar story. Yang at oh. bottom being a little pressured quite a lot, but they can't even get this kill with three heroes, and Yang is already level two and a half. And that, that frees up FY, who yeah, he's can start in. to be pesky here in the jungle. He was trying to do that earlier when Crit, and Crit found him, but this is the beauty of this boots first, is even if you get found, can't kill you, I want to say. Maybe with some sick body box here, but that fine yeah. with boots. No D-Gen, no mana for follow burrow, mm -hmm. so... You have to let him go. This is one support keeping two supports busy, so the trade-off there is easily worth it. Universe even lost a bit of his, like, farm and XP from, from having Rubik there as well, so all in all, very annoying stuff coming out with Y. And they are definitely winning here when it comes to CS. End is already doubling up the, the cores of EG. Yeah. That rider bottom has worked out pretty well. He's forced three heroes to the lane. He slowed down Arteezy's farm, who's significantly behind the enemy anti mage. Uh, the one lane they're slightly winning is mid, but Ghost is still CSing here, God. So oh, yeah. things are looking really good for Vici Gaming thus far. They are already up 750 gold, about 500 experience against a jungle beastmaster. It used to be whenever you'd see the jungle beastmaster, it was like the the old enigma, where it's like, all right, they're gonna be up like a thousand plus experience in a, a couple of minutes, but not the case so far. And they recognize the weak lanes, they're going to be going for the kill on the, the mid razor here. They smoke up, Rubik after suicide, he TP smokes up, and the lift with Blade Fury should be enough for a kill here. And the spin goes through, Sumail's doing a lot of damage, but he gets pulled back towards the Oracle. The Blade Fury gets it done, and Ghost will collect his first blood and walk safely away. Yeah. So, true to form, FY, he's known for early roaming, even though we've seen it a bit less nowadays. He is certainly known for not being afraid to smoke gank and managed to secure Blood Sumail. Got a little early help from the Omni, but to his own will now pick. I, just, I mean, FY is one of those players who just always finds a way to get involved early. Pressuring the jungle, now he's mid. He got first luck for his team. He's just such a good player. They are looking for Yang bottom, though. That would be a big pick off. Okay. EG are going to secure it at the same time, though. The trade comes top as Vici Gaming bring down Universe on the Beastmaster, so no good going on punch here. They still manage to find trades around the map. See, RTZ keeping relatively even with the AM, all things considered. He isn't, he's no longer being doubled up anyway. But already, you can see Vici are going to look to play the economy game later on. They're stacking Ancients. They don't really mind if they give up a kill here or there in the bat. They they feel like they can just outfarm EG a bit later on. As, uh, FY, I think, just killed the Courier. Is that the boar? There was a boar over in that area. I don't know. Uh, where did it die? Oh, sorry, that was Universe. Oh, it was the Radiant Curator that died, not the Dire one. Yeah, I don't know what happened I to think it. it was FY who killed it off. Yeah. Now, like, looking to make a move on Sumail in the mid lane. They lift him up, they get the crit, and that will prompt the Blade Fury. FY letting the zap go. Sumail, he does have the Fairy Fire. We'll make it out, but they cancel that salve. Vici Gaming successfully punishing him and really making this mid lane difficult. Razor down 800 net worth right now to the enemy Juggernaut. And that largely the first blood. 
Yeah, that's one of those games where it was basically the outcome was basically just as good as getting the kill because he has to walk all the way back to base, heal up, buy a TP or buy a self, and then come back to lane. So the Maybe outcome is Jug gets some farm, perhaps slightly less, but it's still a very good outcome. Oh, Zai is playing so close here. The top lane, trying to juke the anti mage, and it looks like he'll barely do so. Radiant Bit of a greedy build from end. He's got attack. more points in stats, means he won't find that kill. Uh, so it looks like the courier actually, I think it died top, so maybe AM just blinked and killed it. Gotcha. I, I had to rebind my hockey. They, uh, they added a new feature where you can press any button to select a hero. But yeah, Michi Gaming. Ghost now bottling up the regen rune. He is closing in on Omni Slash, and this is the one situation where you can maybe get a kill on a Razor where you normally wouldn't be able to is when you first get that Omni, but bottom, bottom lane. A lift onto Arteezy. He does have his ultimate ready now, but forcing it out would be pretty big. Mm. Not even going to be able yeah. to do that, though. Very patient play by Artor. They almost got there before his level 6. If they got there before the level 6, could have been a kill, but... Instead, we'll see Arteezy go aggressive. We'll see FY stacking, stacking the Emmy jungle as well. Yeah, that's... A little unusual. Have found FY a deep dive for him, and now the repel onto Arteezy. He will have the pounce available in about 10 seconds, but Dark Pack, Richard Finner, and FY will end up going down just for the wolves. It looks like they're going to stack it so that uh, Yang can farm it. So, sure. They still get that economic uh, advantage in terms of CS here, though. It does come at the cost of a hero in this case. Not often you see a team stacking the enemy jungle for their bat when their tier 1 are still up, but... Yang is farmed. He has got 2.3k net worth, 1300 gold towards his blink dagger. This is fantastic farm for a bat rider to have in the off lane. And that's where this laning set for EG was just... And the draft as a whole was kind of confusing. And you're kind of guessing, like, how are they going to lane this? They don't have any hero to zone the off laner. And this is what happens when you can't zone the off laner. Bat rider at seven minutes in is like two thirds of the way to a blink dagger. Unfortunately, he misses a stack. But even so, this bat is very, very rich. Universe has made his way up towards top. They're now giving the lane to crit. They leave the Beastmaster in the jungle. Radiant Courier now going to respawn. And it's got a lot of a lot of work to do, this little Venno lane. Is it working out? But the smoke gank sends on the top lane, and the repel is there, but Universe already pulled up into the air. Enough to keep him alive, that repel. Weren't able to latch on anyone in time. Nobody really low as far as money goes. As we will see End working towards his Battle Fury. Eyes out for stacks. They've got a, a decent amount here. It looks like three double overall gods. Yep. The nice thing about this jug pick is they will have a defusal buyer to deal with the repel as well. Smoke towards the mid lane though, they aren't going to stop any of the stacks. It looks like they'd rather go for the kill on Ghost. Uh, and they do have the roars. This will be tough for the juggernaut. Already Blade Fury committed, but damage being stolen. Backup coming in the form of that Oracle's Oracle. Here. Not level 6 just yet, and not enough to save him. See that Oracle TP? I'm like, if that's level 6 Oracle, like, that could just turn things, well, not turn around kills, but save his F and waste EG's time. You, nice can, you, just, get that. you can just Blade Fury and, and pop that Omni when the False Promise is about to wear off and really frustrate EG, but... Rotation there by the Beastmaster of Universe, finally getting active. And it keeps the game still within striking distance for EG now. They would love for this to be a quiet mid-game so they can get their farm and levels on the... Yeah. He's very uh, farm and experience dependent, well, mainly experience dependent on us. It's strange because like they want... They want quiet and slow pace, but they're reversing an anti-mage, and that's exactly what he wants as well, so... We'll see how that those two kind of play into each other. For now, Batrider, his blink dagger timing could be the the go sign for Vici Gaming. So, it is a Fusal Blade Rush. No drums for Ghost, not even an Aquila. Already, he's grabbed the recipe. Man, he needs to work on stacking this big cap. He's missed it twice in a row. Disappointing, LG. Disappointing. It's a bit unfortunate. I'm like the I'm like the Asian parent who's just like, no, nope, you got a you got an A minus. Why isn't that an A plus? Because he's played so ridiculously well this game. It's just like as far as his overall farm, but uh, I mean that's a decent. I mean he would of gold. he would he's have missed. the blink by now for sure. Yep. It's a little thing, but it can make a difference. Then we'll jump forward, looking for universe blink now complete. Still a very good timing. Where does he look to go? That is the question. 
Who are your eyes on right now if you're Batrider? Any, anyone in particular you're looking um, to kill? I'm probably looking to pair up with Jug. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. oh, he guesses wrong with Blade Fury. Jeez, I was also hoping God. I didn't have a point of Sandstorm there, but... Uh, support Sand King. Now, Ghost trying to run away, and Zai... It's gonna end up outplaying him in security kill. I, I'm pretty sure he's just banking on him not killing the sense over there. Yeah, that's unfortunate for him and a big kill to, to give away. DDC will TP out of farm, but... Sloppy from Ghost, I mean, we saw it kind of in the last one. He made a mistake, but he comes back, so he is one of those kind of risky all-in players. Last time on top of the Yank, he's found the universe, and with the Edmonds to back up this game, it will be a kill beast master. And the secure it already has a complete perseverance. Tower, though, bottom. What's up going down now? Jeez, they... Grab an objective. The first overall tower of the game. Made it tricky though. If Mage Mage gets this top tower, that's practically his completed battle fear again. The siege creep support it would just be tower going down. Drums up for Sumail to go with his infused raindrop, so tanking up as much as possible on the razor. What is Arteezy gonna go for here? 2500? Our shadow blade right away? Yeah, I, I gotta imagine so. It's just your stable, strong item to get. The gank each potential as well as just the fact that uh, it gives you decent damage and stats to go with it. But there we go, AM gets his tower and that's 150 gold short of a battle fury now. And the and smoke from universe is coming too late. Oh, that hurts for EG. What a time yeah. it would have been to kill him. He might try to take the stack back a couple minutes. If Y's out of there, and they see the, just a double stack, and it's like, is it even worth like just taking your time to steal? They may decide it is, but anti-mage, really safe play from him. Great map awareness gets out. And he does so at like the worst possible time for EG when they're like an inch away from killing him. But yeah. still, EG making aggressive maneuvers here as Arteezy debuts the Shadow Blitz. Deep into the enemy woods. Can he jump onto FY? Oh, he almost finds the time he does get the pass. The heal is there. Still is secure. And that will also additionally ensure that they get this tier one unopposed in the top lane. Nice pick there by RTZ. Good first move, the Observer Ward to help provide the vision, but elsewhere on the map it's Vici Gaming taking a bottom tier one tower. So it's it's almost the same trade we saw just a minute ago where EG get the bottom tier one, Vici get the top, AM then rotates bottom and makes the exact same trade. The Rubik kill. Not really too big a deal. Rubik's level six. He, he's the kind of sacrificial lamb that scouts out the shadow pits, but all in all, uh, VG Gaming's still in a great position just to play a typical AM game. Uh, but it's eye rolling in on mid, he does find the quick pick on FY. Two deaths in a row, FY looking rather mortal. Not very godly at this stage, he had a great start. Yeah. I have been shutting him down the stretch here as VG Gaming look for a leap in, but uh, who do you lasso here? If you don't lasso the, bat, the beast, he roars you. You don't rat lasso someone else, they get healed and uh, repelled by crit. You don't really want to go on Razor. I can throw out. In the end, he says, I'm not going to lose to anyone. Yeah, the observe what between the towers that set all that up for the initial kill, but gets taken out. So, again, it's just it's Rubik dying to create some space for AM. It is his fourth death, so it, they are starting to add up a bit, but. Oh, if I own Rubik, you know, he'll make some plays happen regardless of how underfarmed he is or underleveled. He's probably not too concerned about his own ability to impact this game, but the concern probably comes from Arteezy's slack. Starting to add up has been in four kills. We'll continue to just snowball around this map, and that's where you're going to be thinking, do we get an early gem? Yang has got the piece towards his, what I believe to be his four staff, so he could get a four staff and then consider a very early gem to help deal with the slack. Even the Sand King with his invis. So EG just kind of head out in the mid lane here, and they are going to opt for a smoke. Beastmaster Rorth already, Universe, moving into the river, but Ghost just outside of their range, it looks like. The Roar, did they find the Anti-Mage? He blinks out, there was a ward to scout him. End is wise to their tricks, he will make it out safely. Yeah. Smoke still covering a couple of EG arrows, but Zion Universe were revealed, and now a 14 minute Defusal Blade. So say goodbye to your level 3 repel if this is used properly. Hmm. I don't know, I think it's a bit of a trap to go fight into EG just because your team fight is lackluster compared to theirs. You don't have that big team fight ultimate that we've seen them play with last game. There's no Void, no Tide Hunter type hero. 
your team fight is a bat rider being able to initiate and get a, a pick off to start things off. But he can't even reliably do that without a full, full staff. So, Major Vici Gaming will still be very kind of tentative to fight into like an Omni, Razor, Beastmaster, Sand King. These are all kind of team fight specialists. Are you liking EG's overall game plan here, guys? Just like heavy five man pressure this early? Yeah, I think it's good. They're capitalizing on the fact that Vici Gaming aren't fight ready. The AM wants to split push and farm. The Batrider doesn't have a full staff, and you've got no real good, reliable initiation. Uh, and even Juggernaut himself is fairly squishy. If he gets roared, he's going to go down. This defusal rush does leave him somewhat vulnerable. TZ trying to hunt end here, does force the TP out and. Not really sure if there's anyone else behind him. POA back to safety. Starts farming up neutrals. Already a Yasha complete though. Even though Slark is a decent farmer, he is no one is keeping up with this AM on their own. So it's gonna have to be a team effort by EG to deal with him down the stretch. Yep. Yeah, he'll just continue to try find pickoffs on supports where possible, but needs to, like you say, maintain his level of farm as well if he wants to fight the AM later on. Otherwise, we'll get to this point where AM has like Manta, Abyssal, and just blinks on Psyche, Abyssal's him, burns his mana, blows him up. Well, EG, still waiting on that Zai blink for their reliable initiation. Is first it up for the, the Necro book? Probably the more standard Beastmaster build. Sometimes we see the Necro one back into a blink, but rarely do we see a, a blink rush nowadays. Does mean, though, that yeah. they're lacking reliable initiation. They VG have been able to play around uh, so far. In some ways, I feel like it's probably the, one of the more important item timings for them. The Necro 3, the other one. Oh, Universe is being caught there. Uh, oh, those eyes behind him. The Burrow only catches out and Yang is just left free to go to work here. They get up an epicenter and doesn't have the mana. The Necro will prevent the blink out. Universe able to help out there. Good Our easy Zai uh, and Sumail securing the kill in the end. Sumail with the boots of travel rush. Hadn't seen that item pick up yet, but he uses it to great effect to turn it around. They barely managed to burn enough mana off the anti mage to prevent his blink out, but great turnaround. Zai in the right position, Sumail ready to TP in, and that's the pick off that you've been waiting for. That's like the pick off that will give you about a three, four thousand gold swing just because of the map control and the tower objective taken that follow it up. Oh, that's like the dream, too, because they're so bad at killing AM without a sand cane, but. If you can bait him in and force him to come to fights, you can kill him and you can take a tower. That is a coup de grace for EG. Yeah. Immediately, VG Gaming just shove out the other two lanes. But uh, Tizi's trying to punish this split push. He's rotating in on bottom, and with a TP support, he could try and fight this one. Oh, he's been spotted. He's getting down, and his Shadow Blade did wear off, so. And he knows there, there's a ward in the area if he's watching his Shadow Dance, so not yeah. going to try to move in any further. We'll back down for now, but this is buying time for Zai. Only 900 to go until that blink. And they are they are getting oh. their levels. Crit, level 4 heal, level 3 repel. You get the ultimate soon. Uh, the Beastmaster is level 2 ultimate. He's a gem. got a gem, yeah. Three coming. Thank Crit bottom a gem. I love ready. this. I love this play because you can find all the wards with the with the slack. Like, Artizi was just pinging around where that ward was, and then they send the hawk over, easy D ward, and this is just pure early mid game dominance style of play coming from EG, with the map control that this gem provides. Not to mention the vision from the hawks. So where do Vici go from here? What do you Smart. what do you reckon is, is next for them? Are they just farming the AM and playing for late game? They want to farm the AM, but they can't just do that by playing ultra passive. They probably want to go for some smoke plays. Um, use like smoke pick off to create space is kind of the uh, the best idea for them. While end farms away on the anti mage, but now it's Slark scouting them out, finding them on the map, and they perhaps need even a gem of their own just to help counter the vision. That and look at EG's vision right now. They've got wards deep by the T2 mid tower in the Dire jungle. The Slack shadow blading scouting stuff are scouting a lot out, so they, I think, just need a gem themselves. Yeah, they have a great hero to carry it in the form of the Bat Rider. Does have the money for it should he choose to buy it. Pretty blink force picked up, but. So you CRT is he just creeping in the mid lane, hoping to find a pickoff. Has the DD rune ready to go. Shadow blade will wear off. AM. Gaming, a bit in the jungle. They're just sitting on this mid observer ward right by their T2 tower. This has been such a value ward planted and Vichy Gaming all hovered around, scattered out. 
Probably like a minute per hero. Uh, they've been under that ward's watchful gaze. A lot of confidence EG have to move around elsewhere. It's easy. It's going to run down Ghost. He found the Juggernaut. He's looking for a second. The heal bomb comes through. The Lasso's there, but it's going to repel Darcyzy. Can he bring him down in time? It certainly doesn't look like it. Now on the Yang, the Oracle has to keep him alive, but it's all falling apart for Vichy now. And just hoping for a good Monovoid opportunity here. Blinking forward, Yang will end up surviving for the time being. The Opal gets out, but Yang will fall in the end. That will force Zen to just back away. Oh no, maybe not. He goes back in with the Mana Boys. Then he gets roared. Say hello to the Necro Book and say goodbye to your life, my friend. Four for Yikes. nil. EG showing some flashes of brilliance here. It all began with Arteezy and a DD rune. Yeah, Arteezy, again, going it's similar to game one where it's like brilliance from individual players. Arteezy really steps it up there, gets a solo kill in the Jug. Jug gets pounced and immediately tries to blade through away, but Arteezy knows he's got the damage he needs. He even pops the Shadow Dance just for the movement speed to chase down and get the kill on the Jug. And there was nothing. Rubik's just sitting there like, I can't help you. I can't help you. I'm just going to hope he doesn't see me as well. But if he sees me, we're both dead. And turns out he did see the Rubik and they both go down. EG. Just making some great individual plays to get themselves back in this game and then they turn those individual plays into towers objectives and that's when they come together as a team so looking a lot better from eg here with their overall draft and play style here in game number two now they grab the age of sarteezy scooping that up so I thought this slark was hard to kill already man oh man has he gotten a lot more difficult still no basher uh, on end is it looks like building towards the vanguard, but still gonna be a ways off until he's able to complete it. That's if he doesn't go for something more defensive, like a I don't know, a Lincoln Sphere potentially. But how do they deal with Slark at this point? That's mm. that's quickly becoming the question of the game. Yeah, Slark. The lockdown of a Basher is just gonna be able to kill the Jug that much easier now. This Jug is looking very vulnerable and squishy. 1k HP and. I think the Diffuser Rush is a bit of a trap. The Repel isn't so much the problem as just surviving the like the, the initiation, the Blink Stun from the Sand King, the Roar, the Slack solo killing you. To do that, you just need HP and stats. Going for the Manta first perhaps would have been the better option. To see how much more confident EG are in their position. They're farming the enemy woods. They're holding mid lane with just a, a support duo and do mail. Quietly continue to keep his farm up. He's right there with Arteezy. I mean, frankly, it doesn't feel like we've seen much of him since the laning stage, but he, he's doing his job. And all the while, universe off in the woods. Necro 3 now complete. 1700 gold bank. G, like you said, not only choosing good opportunities to fight, but then following that up with some very efficient play to get objectives and maximize their farm moving forward. Razor has to be like the least splashy carry hero in Dota. That was like fast when you play Razor every game and you're just like, well, he's carrying his team, sometimes solo carrying them with Hachi farms and doing it in a very aggressive way, but that's kind of what Sumail is right now. Like, really farmed, maintained great CS, he's getting some kills, but it's not a flashy hero. Oh dear. Well, DDC, you're gonna die, my friend. But they do get the last one for crit. Uh, so yep. it will be, it looks like a one for one. Maybe not dead yet. He submitted his ultimate and yep, see you later. So DDC will drop a one for one support trader on the map. Any night for the Oracle. Now they are gonna try to hunt Arteezy here. He bounces away. Does MY still have that stolen burrow? He does don't have the detection oh, in position, and now Arteezy looking to go back in. He can just burst down FY, prevent him from getting out. No, the burrow strike's there. Go to retreat. Mm -hmm. Out of lift, good. and there is no follow for this. <laughs> no bad left, sir. Smell comes in to snipe the healing warden. This could. They, they can't actually get this T2 tower so easily. The creep wave is pushed really deep for now. That was the anti mage pushing it all the way to the tier 3 tower, and. End's not done, he's pushing out the mid lane. He needs to be careful because Beastmaster is just behind him. Also, it is going to be a Perseverance, and it looks like End will be going for a Lincoln tier. Sure, I, I, it allows him to... This is a game where you can't really teamfight. You want to play the split push game, and the Lincoln provides that more so than like the, the Vanguard into Abyssal Blade. You're worried about getting caught out, you're not worried about the, the lack of damage. And that's where the Lincolns can stop that Blink Roar, can stop a Blink Fire Strike. So I think the item, given the situation and position Vici Gaming are in, makes more sense than the Abyssal Blade. Uh, we have seen the pounce stolen by, by FY. Not the 
the dream Rubik's <laughs> ability. Yeah. But it's something, I suppose, as Arteezy oh, continues gosh. his relentless pursuit. Will he get the bash? Yes, he will. Three hits, one bash. Oracle here to try and save Ghost. It will Blade Fury out of that pounce and then Ghost walking back in to Vince. Excusably starts to try and make it up with the Razor of Chanel right. Tries to bring him down the healing ward. Enough that's why it comes out as Arteezy comes in. And in the end, Arteezy, he forces a defusal charge. He walks away and he says, it's time to hit buildings, my friends. I've got a, an Aegis, a gem still as well. Very confident in this siege. Yeah, they have creeps in the mid lane too. I was like, oh, no battle protection, great. And with the creeps in the mid lane, they're just going to go for this Mither X, force the anti mage to fight. He has Lincoln, though. He is walking though. back down mid like he wants to. But already, Rax have fallen. The power of the Beastmaster. Lincoln's is now complete. Okay, actually engage. I mean, still, my question is, who do you go on? Not OTC. He's got the Aegis. You kind of have to jump Universe or Zai, I feel like, else you just get roared or burrowed. Yeah, that's... Can't ignore Omni. You don't to me. want to last a Razor, so... <laughs> I don't know who you go on, guns. Once the Aegis expires, we can get Arteezy playing too aggressive. That's always a consideration, but... Arteezy's been on point without a death to his name yet this game. Man, he, this is... His individual play, it been as bad a secret looked as a team and as disappointing as they were for their fans like his his individual play was pretty much immaculate last ci the, the one before it you know there were quite a few times where he got caught out but really hard to fault how he played as an individual and it seems like he is continuing that excellence here on the new eg yeah, they absolutely. now extend their lead to about six seven thousand gold four or five thousand experience comfortable advantage here leading 12 to 4 in a relatively high game What's he gonna find? Five man group up in smoke. Arteezy not in there in time to scout this one out. Oh. Maybe can scout them on the way oh, out. He's in the him. tree line and he's gonna break the smoke. Now looks to jump away, but the oh the man's is there. He will commit his ultimate. Very defensive play for the Slark. Doesn't try to just oh, run away okay. courtesy oh, of no the detection. Silver Edge. They, Where they was chase, it? but fine. Someone had a gem, right? No, no uh, gem. Oh the, the bat really needed a gem. That's a radiant gem. The one that uh Crit fought earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Batrider has a he blinked on top of Arteezy when he came out of the Shadow Dance, but just didn't have detection for the Shadow Blade. It goes back to I mean you're behind, yes, and money's limited resource, but you've gotta have a gem at this stage of the game on the dire side. Otherwise EG's just gonna win by map control. And sentries just you end up spending so much money on sentries, you may as well hit gem and go kind of all in. I mean they certainly have heroes who could have bought it. DDC went for an Aether Lens, FY Went for his tranquil soul rain earned energy booster into Aether Lens. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, FY does like to farm on supports, and sometimes it, it just wins them games, but be one where he lives to regret it. Given how far behind they are right now, he's going to need to make some big plays in these team fights to negate that gold advantage that EG have. It's just tougher at Rubik when he gets caught by Slark. Not like a really a great escape plan unless you you've stolen Burrow. Even then, if you have mastered anyway. Bottles of DD rune. I was about to say he left it there, but he picked it up in a bottle for a team fight. I like this play coming out from EG. And he's gonna go hunting a bit, looking for kills. We'll be walking past a lot of sentries here though, and yeah, he'll recognize himself getting scattered out by the ward. I mean, they have had centuries, but it, like you said, it's just at that stage of the game where a century is not good enough. You you, you have to have something more reliable. Well, and in a team fight, those centuries can just get destroyed because Arteezy himself has a gem, so you need that guaranteed detection on your side. Well, they repel Arteezy and they commence their siege. It's a slow counter push here by N. Bought out for a basher. There is no Aegis. This is a more aggressive maneuver by EG. There is a double damage rune currently up on Arteezy. They still jump on him. They're going to try to focus him down. Can they finish him off? He's so low. He's not dead. The Omni Knight all brings him back up into fighting shape. Zai goes in. He may end up paying for this with his life. But they get Arteezy out safely. They only lose the Sand King for oh, it all. They, they fucked up a bit there. They, they blinked in. The, the AM blinked in where he thought the last target was going to be. But he pulled him over the rack. So AM blinked in and mantid and couldn't hit the Slark. Even just like one or two right clicks would have been enough to kill the Slark, but the coordination between AM and Bat just wasn't there when they initiated, and that cost them. That cost them hard. That was a, a Slark kill that they miss out on. 
That is, uh, a, you know, even though Vici hasn't really changed their roster all that much, the, the fact that they, they were switching roles so much EI, and now they have added one new player, maybe an end wasn't there, maybe you can point to that as part of the issue, but uh, that's just a mistake. You can't afford to be making when a Slark is this farmed, and you finally have him where you want him. Yeah. Even just having a blink and getting a bash off or something, but yep, as it stands, Vici Gaming still, they're holding on, they haven't lost more than that top melee rex, looks like Arteezy will snipe a courier, he's thinking about it. It's really deep now, that's it, if he pops out, he could find himself without a TP and kicked off, so. <laughs> I like the discipline coming out from Arteezy, every now and then. You get a bit too ahead of yourselves, and when you're the ones in, in this big lead, you, the death on the slack could really swing things back the other way. I feel like uh, maybe the Arteezy of old would have gone for that, but new oh, man. Yeah, and again, the AM was such a good pick this game that Vici Gaming will still be in a decent fighting shape. The animization from people like Sumail, though, very much geared towards being able to fight the AM, having the AC to amplify the physical oh, damage. Oh, they found DDC. Quick roar. See ya. Now Arteezy looking for more. Juggernaut has come out, but he still pursues the Burrow Strike through just to set up into the Yule Scepter. He gets there and goes to now. Blade Fury tries to run, quickly gets the Bissell controlled and dealt with. Now End even coming in on this one. Does drive Arteezy back for the moment. Still holding on to that Monovoid. This could be big if he gets it off. He will blink out. Now the pursuit on the Yang with the Repel. He's very difficult to deal with. They throw Universe back courtesy of that Rubik Lift. The self tell ain't going to save you against the Bash. And EG find four. And he just never had an opening for a killer monopoly, and without one, it looks yeah. like guys, we are going to a game three. It's initiation from EG, they get the catch on Oracle, and all it takes one hero to put position, and VG Gaming needs every spell and hero they can get when these team five break out. Having an Oracle means you one of your initiators can't play aggressive because they have the false promise. Or... Oh, there you have it. It's a pretty big monopoly to EG. Take their hands off their keyboards. The GG already called. It will force the sadistic. Yeah. Job salvaging the series and well, still felt like Vici had a good laning stage. It felt like they were very comfortable. It was just that mid-game execution where uh, this time around they were lacking. The, the fight at top where they killed.